Before we get into editing ProRes RAW, here's a short sequence that I filmed shot in ProRes RAW on my Panasonic S5. Let's just get the general housekeeping parts out of the way and then we'll move on to the interesting part. So if you haven't already done so, you'll need to register your product and activate your free ProRes RAW license for your Atmos Ninja V. I would show you guys how to do this, but Atmos have already made a very easy to follow video on this and I'll leave a link to that video in the description of this one. So once you have done that, the next step is to enable the HDMI RAW Record Data Output option on your Lumix camera and that's normally found in the image format menu. This will then allow the signal to be sent to your Atmos Ninja V. Of course, make sure that the recording codec is also set to ProRes RAW on the Ninja V, and then choose between the standard quality or HQ quality. And if I'm being honest, I have tested both and there's not too much difference between the two, so you might as well save yourself a bit of storage space considering that ProRes RAW is already massive. Okay, so that is the setup part done. Now you can run off into the wild and record your raw video. And once you've filled up your terabyte hard drive within 10 seconds, you can then go ahead and follow this workflow when importing your footage into Final Cut Pro. Once your ProRes raw footage is imported into your library, then go ahead and drag the first clip you want to use onto your timeline. You'll see a message pop up saying that you're adding HDR content to an SDR project. And this isn't an issue at all. It's just Final Cut recognizing the HDR data that's stored in the file. All raw footage is HDR by nature, and I'll get onto the HDR side of things once we've gone through the SDR workflow really quickly. So once you've got your first clip on the timeline, you can go ahead and go to the info tab that's found on the right side of your screen. And if you can't find it, just hit Command 4 and your inspector window will show up. You may not be able to see the camera settings display straight away as it defaults to the basic info tab. So just hit the drop down and select settings to see your color space, white balance, and ISO information. You should see that Final Cut automatically sets the raw to log conversion as Panasonic V-Log, so you won't actually need to mess around with that, but you can set the camera light just below to the same Rec.709 conversion light that you normally use, and then do the Rec.709 conversion here instead of the color tab. If you haven't already loaded your preferred conversion light here, then simply hit Add Custom Camera Light and locate it wherever you've got it stored on your computer. Just as a side note, you can actually go ahead and drag all of your ProRes RAW clips into the timeline and then change the camera light in one go for every single clip. This is what I normally do as it saves a bit of time. As you can see here, you can go ahead and change the white balance in a non-destructive way, just like you can with RAW photos. And you can also select whatever ISO value you'd like after the fact. So I'd always record RAW in either ISO 640 or ISO 4000 and then change it accordingly in the inspect panel for the cleanest results. And once you've dialed in your white balance, ISO, and exposure conversation as you'd like it, the color grading process is the exact same as it would be for any other coder that you use, so it's actually really simple. I really hope you guys enjoyed the opening sequence, by the way, and that was filmed entirely in ProRes RAW using an SDR workflow, and all of the sound designer music was actually from Epidemic Sound, who happens to be the sponsor of today's video. The fact that Epidemic Sound allows you to download both the full mix track as well as the individual stems is something that I absolutely love, and I use this feature a lot of my client projects. It means that you can keep a track going in the background and remove the vocals, or even just use a stripped down version to add texture to your edits, and that's exactly what I did with this short sequence. They now also have an iOS app so you can listen to their vast library of quality tracks on the go. And I find this feature invaluable for when I'm in the car, on the way to my shoots, and want to find the right track before I've even started filming. Your videos would also suck without sounds and ambient noises that help to sell what's on screen. So their comprehensive library of sound effects also come in handy for me as well. And I've never struggled to find the right sound effect to match the sound that I have in my head. 
You can sign up for a free 30 day trial using the link in my description. Or if you already know that Epidemic Sound will add an immense amount of value to your workflow, then you can get a whopping 50% off an annual personal subscription using the code JoshCameron50. Thanks again to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video and giving me that extra spice to make my work stand out. Anyways, let's talk about the difference between SDR and HDR workflows a little bit deeper now. For the most part, people will stick to SDR purely because of the screens and platforms that the content will be delivered on. If you look at the luminance graph inside an SDR library, you'll see that the luma ranges from minus 20 to 120. But when you switch to a HDR project, you'll notice how this changes quite drastically. You can change whether your Final Cut library is SDR or HDR by clicking it and pressing modify in the inspector. There you will see the option between the two. Once your library has been switched to the wide gamma HDR function and then go back to your luminance graph inside the project, you can now see that the luma values go from zero all the way to 10,000. And that just shows how much more you can push and pull your footage when you're working in HDR. I'll make a full video implementing a HDR workflow very soon, as well as the advantages and drawbacks that come with it. But for now, I think most of us will be more accustomed to SDR, and that's actually what I recommend if you're only just dipping your toe into the world of raw video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it somewhat useful, entertaining, or interesting. And if you did, then please consider subscribing because I do make a lot of content here surrounding the Lumix ecosystem of cameras and lenses. So if that's your thing, then this channel will definitely be for you. So yeah, thanks again for watching and hopefully I shall see you in the next one.